Good afternoon and welcome to another beautiful Friday afternoon here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I'm Shannon at Bike Tricks and we are going to do another edition of Bike Tricks Live. So today's topic is winterizing your e-bike and specifically winterizing for winter riding. And so I know a lot of our customers are in a lot of different places and you're like, October, it's fall. We're in Saskatchewan. October, it snowed this week. So it is time for some of us to start thinking ahead and getting ready for winter riding. So my guest today is David. I will probably end up calling him Decky because I've known him for a very long time and that's just the name I know him by. But this is David, so welcome. Tell Thank us you. a bit about yourself, how long you've been with the company and what you do. Uh, I have been with Bike Tricks for three years now, as of like last week, I think. Sweet. And I am on the R&D team. I'm helping develop and uh, create new and exciting things for Bike Tricks e-bikes. Things like the Armageddon Light and the Armadillo fenders, yep. fenders. Those are some things our customers might be familiar with that and have some, come out of R&D already. And more things that are coming down the pipeline that are even bigger and more exciting. Yeah, I'm we super can. stoked. I'm very excited for everybody to find out about them. Nice, awesome. All right, so I asked you to be my guest here today because yes. you do ride your bike pretty much all year round. Yeah, I have in the past. It's been a couple of years since I've gotten a chance to. Um, just logistically hasn't worked out. But yeah, I do love winter riding. It's actually a very, very fun and like, uh, it's a very different experience to ride in the winter. Yeah, and it's actually something that folks ask us a lot, particularly in the Saskatoon yeah. showroom is, can I ride this bike all year round? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, can. you can. There are some things you need to keep in mind and maybe prepare for and probably wear some extra layers uh, before you do so, but it is something you can do. But yes. we'll go over some of those things today here that maybe to watch out for, keep in mind, get prepared for. So let's start just with me as a person, getting ready to winter ride. Yes. Me as a person. All right, so I did ride my bike to work this morning and it is actually Thursday. I looked out my window this morning, it was snowing. Now the snow didn't stick, it nope. hit and melted, but it was quite cold. Yes, it was. I was like, just above freezing, so I'd already committed to riding. So I layered up <laughs> like it's 1997, and I put on a few more jackets, windbreakers, mittens, hoods. So let's go over what is recommended for different temperatures as we go through the year. Alrighty. So I mean, at, at, at our weather right now, at around zero or 32 Fahrenheit for our American friends, um, we, I mean, for the most part, I would say a nice light jacket, uh, maybe an extra layer, base layer, just to stay nice and warm. Some good uh, thermal mitts. You don't want to have like riding gloves as those are going to be mesh and really not do much. No. Um, and then long pants, good, good socks, shoes. Uh, I would also say potentially uh, a nice set of sunglasses or riding glasses just to keep the cold air out of your eyes. Can that, that can make things somewhat miserable just a touch uh, i did notice that this morning with the wet and cold uh, i wore my sunglasses and some thermal mitts and uh, well my nose was frozen and i thought i might lose my pinkies to frostbite so i'll be better prepared tomorrow yeah but let's go over just some of the gear we have here and yes. some of it is going to be good for fall our fall is some folks winter and some of it we'll get into what's ideal for saskatchewan winters which yes. can get down to like Minus 40 Celsius. I, have, I mean, I've personally ridden at minus 35, minus 37 Celsius. It was not by choice that day. It was and a bit of a surprise. Fun. Yeah, let's look up what that is in Fahrenheit, because I think it's around the same, actually. I think that's close to where the crossover point is. It's close. So Celsius to Fahrenheit, if we go... Minus, minus 37. Minus 35. Okay, so that's minus 34. Fahrenheit, just so, for a reference for yes. you folks. Uh, yeah, it, it was cold. Uh, it, was it was very chilly, but I mean, it is possible and it can be made to be 
enjoyable if you are prepared. Exactly. All so. right. So some of the gear we have here in front, some is mine, some is Decky's. Uh, let's just go over. So what I had this morning um, was my ninja hood. I'm going to put on my ninja hood, which is a great base layer for underneath my helmet. It's not COVID mask approved, so I'm gonna layer it with my actual mask. There we go. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. And my helmet. Uh, if you are considering doing something that goes under just a regular helmet, make sure your helmet still fits over top. Um, I had to switch to my thinner squishies and my Skyline helmet to get it to work, but there we go. It's pretty good. And, and then I had sunglasses, yeah. which weren't quite enough this morning. So I will go for the little bit colder weather version of this, where if it gets, if when, once you get colder, you can add a toque along with your face mask underneath the helmet. I have also uh, gone with mask as well as a bandana to keep out even more of the wind. Uh, and then switching from uh, sunglasses to snowboarding goggles, yeah. which we have right here. So those were going to keep even more uh, wind off of your face. My rule of uh, thumb with all of this is if the colder it gets, the more you need to be sure that no skin is showing because that's how frostbite happens and that's how things begin to suck. Yeah, so, not great. No. So You're going to look like a fly, a very colorful fly as you ride, but that is how you stay safe and stay warm. My face feels very insulated right now, actually. It feels pretty good. I, I guess like especially it. with your mask underneath. Yeah, it really layers. That counts as like the bandana. Yeah. So you might be fine. I might be fine. I'll yeah. give this a go on the way home. I'm pretty stoked. And there we go. The color scheme is fantastic. All right. So that takes care of the noggin. It does take care of your noggin. Especially the helmet. Especially the helmet. These are key. Especially yeah. in winter when you're dealing with ice and snow. Oh. And Black ice. Yes. Yeah. What about our mitts? Mitts. So, I mean, our, our first are, are the ones that you have here, just nice thermal mitts. And I just picked these up at like Costco. Yeah. Yeah. Just something that is going to keep wind off of your hands because wind is really what makes everything bad. Yeah. Because uh, as long as you can keep the cold air from coming through, that'll keep a lot of your uh everything warm exactly and then we can move up to something along these lines so these are triggered mitts so they're uh split three and one so that you still have access to your shifter and to your brake levers without having to move your entire hand it just gives you a little bit of extra dexterity and they're a little bit more insulated than uh than the other thermal mitts and you can layer up you can have these over top of your mittens and they will uh they will still work. Help. Thank you. Nailed it. Ooh, these are fun. I know, right? Can I borrow these for my bike ride home, please? 100%. Yes, thank you. Um, there are also versions that split your fingers, kind of like Spock or like a lobster. I'm uh, personally more of a fan of these. These are mine, but I, I had a set of the lobsters, and I just like that because that way everybody has a friend, <laughs> and they warm. keep each other warm. Nice. So. Awesome. All right, so now... I feel pretty confident. Yes. And these will probably keep me warm, especially if I layer them up into some of those pretty deep Yeah, into some of those colder days. And like we can go even farther, but we'll talk about that when we'll we get, get to the bike itself. Yes. All right. So that's your helmet. My helmet. Uh, and then the other thing is as we get colder, we're going to want to add base layers. Like yes. the sweater underneath this, the, the shirt here. My waffle shirt. Yeah. So like I personally, at the colder weather, I will have my like thermal shirt base layer and then i will have a long sleeve t-shirt a short sleeve t-shirt and then my bunny hug slash hoodie uh depending on where you're from and then uh an outer shell layer just like uh, what you want to do is you don't want to have one big thick layer you're gonna have a, a lot of thin ones because that gives you the ability to uh, scale it depending on the weather. So you want to have like a setup and work your way uh, thicker as you go 
deeper into the winter. And if your weather is anything like Saskatchewan weather, this morning it was about zero, but it's probably going to be plus 10-ish when I ride home. I won't likely need quite as many layers on my way home as I needed yeah. this morning, but you need to be able to customize. So exactly. I had my thicker hoodie and then as a windbreaker, I put my wind jacket, rain jacket, waterproof shell yeah. over top and that helped a lot and was yes. quite comfortable. Um, yeah, the biggest game changers for me riding in the winter were the snowboarding goggles and uh, long johns, really. Yeah. Like a nice merino base nice layer. Exactly. Nice some ice breakers. Pants. Yeah. Um, um, some thick socks. Some thick socks. Also, if you're riding, if you're commuting while riding in the winter, take extra socks. Like take a full set of extra clothing. Have your riding gear as well as your work clothing, because you are gonna sweat. Like you're gonna be very, you're gonna be very layered up, and you're, there is gonna be sweat involved. So just go, pre leave prepared for both. Make sure Plus, you pack if it's melty with, yeah. and exactly. like wet, you're gonna fling water up onto yourself. So maybe some yeah. like rain pants over yep. top. Also a good idea. Always a good plan. As with any warm winter activity, the best way to enjoy it is to stay warm and dry. Dry, dry is being the big the part. Key. Yeah. As soon as you're damp, you're not going to have any fun. Exactly. All right. So that is gear. Yes. I can find technical pants. You can wear like winter boots, or um, I have a pair of Vans that are more winter, yeah. so they're a little low profile. Um, um, things it, like that. Yeah. For as far as footwear is concerned, you want to have something that still leaves ankle mobility because you do, your ankles do need to be able to move while you're riding. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to big, wear your big sorrels that come halfway up your shin. Yeah, Because it's going to, yeah, your snowmobile uh, boots aren't going to be as comfortable to ride in as they would be on a snowmobile itself. 100%. All right, so, so I think uh, clothing-wise, we're pretty set up to rock and roll. Yeah. Let's set up a ride. Like what? Yes, let's. All right, so you may recognize my lovely assistant, Willow. Of course, my <laughs> ultra duo. Uh, She's made many appearances, I'm She's guessing. She's made several, yes. Yeah. Um, fan favorite, I bet. Fan favorite. I did ride to work this morning, like I said. Uh, so she's a little mucky, but I will wipe her down when I get home. Yes. So talk to me about getting Willow ready for the winter. Well, actually, you just mentioned one of the very important ones is after you're done riding for the day, make sure you do wipe it down. Uh, just have a, a chamois at home or a cloth, just so that you can make sure that any standing water is taken off, wipe off any snow. It'll prevent rust and, uh, and any corrosion from happening. Um, Especially if you're in a place that salts their streets yes. uh, and puts like any sort of chemical or anything down on their streets in the winter to prevent icing. As you ride through that, it is gonna like splash up onto your bike. So you wanna just make sure you wipe that down yes. um, just to keep the longevity of your ride. Exactly, you want, you, we want your bike to be with you as long as possible. Exactly. Okay, so wipe it down, keep it clean, keep it dry. Yes. What else do I need to do? Um, a big one as well is just making sure you keep on top of your maintenance. It's gonna be a lot more um, necessary in the winter. So uh, lubing your chain is a big one. Uh, in the winter, we wanna to move to a wet lube rather than our normal dry lube that we use for the summer because that's gonna like wick away the moisture and it's gonna keep everything happy. We can use wet because it's not gonna be dry and dusty. And we did go over how to maintain your drivetrain and lube your chain in our drivetrain maintenance video. Perfect. So if you have any questions on how to clean and lube your chain, check that video out. Maybe Alex can pop that link down in the description later for us nice. uh, just to make it easy to find. All right, so that's my drivetrain. Make sure I keep the crud out, keep yes. it dry, keep it lubed. What about like my batteries? What do I need to take into consideration? Uh, I w if it's being stored out in a garage or an area that isn't heated, I would take the batteries inside to charge them. They don't like being cold, uh, just like you. Um, so that would, that would be the main thing for me, is just making sure that you keep them warm, even when you get to your destination, if you can't bring your bike inside with you, take make sure that take your in. batteries in. Now, um, batteries also don't like to be charged from cold. So if no. I just went out on a long bike ride on a really cold day and I brought my batteries in and I want to charge them, I should probably let them get back to room yes, temperature definitely. before plugging them in. And this will just help with the lifespan of your battery. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Anything? I've got, I think two more. Two more. Okay. Yes. Especially with Willow. So in the winter, once it get, once we have a lot of snow on the ground, fenders are actually a bit more of a, than they are uh, helpful. 
because what can happen is snow can build up inside them and it can actually start rubbing and slowing you down and creating more friction. Interesting. Which will actually be, make, make your ride less enjoyable. So if you, like I wouldn't say take them off as soon as the, as the snow flies because it's still gonna protect you, but just make sure that you have either leave clearance or if you find that they are building up, just take them off and they can go back on in the spring when it starts melting and gets gross again. Because once, once we get really cold, you're not going to be throwing stuff up at yourself that's too bad. Yeah, that's, that's not too as bad. much. Um, snow only so. fall, falls between a certain temperature range yeah. and sometimes it's colder than that. Exactly. So that is something to consider. Now, while we're talking about fenders and front ends, what about tires and wheels? Anything I need to consider there, like well, I'm sure there's something. Oh, always. So, I mean, uh, I personally, in the winter, I will run a little bit of a lower pressure to give me a nice wide uh, contact patch, giving me more traction. Uh, another option would be to move to something along these lines here, which is a nice big studded tire. Now, I don't know if there's these not guys would fit on this on one. This no, and, no. and also, they wouldn't, this guy would not fit on, uh, on here, as we've got different size wheels. But if you look, we have big metal studs, usually carbide, that will dig into ice and packed snow and give you even more traction and keep you safer. Yeah, so if you're somewhere really icy, really snowy, maybe want to look into finding some studded tires. Uh, you can get tires that are studable, and wherever you see like these little metal dots, there would be a hole, and then you can get a stud kit to pop in. Now, currently, we don't have stock of any because I know we're going to get asked that right away. <laughs> this is an old takeoff tire. It has been used. We're just showing it for an example. Um, I know winter tires and studded tires have been a little trickier to find the they last, have been. like last year and this year. Uh, yeah. So currently, because I don't have any. Just like I, I, a lot of the bike industry, it's a bit more of a niche. Winter riding is kind of more of a, uh, a fun thing rather than what the bike industry sees as necessary so they don't the stock itself is not as available as say a normal summer tire add to that current conditions in the bike industry exactly. it's kind of tough I'm, but if you can find them it is something to consider yes. just make sure you're getting the right width and rim size for your bike yeah. now if you don't have studded tires that's okay just exactly. make sure you have something with some grip i yep. wouldn't really recommend street slicks no. for the winter because it's yeah. right in the name slicks uh, and they're not going to get as good attraction on snow exactly. and ice as you would like a mountain bike style tire. The other thing uh, I just looked down and I saw that we had a fork here that has lockout. I would actually recommend lock, if you do have a suspension fork that has lockout, locking it out for the winter. Just because the oil gets really thick and if you can actually damage your fork if it gets too cold and it tries to do its job. So if you have that lockout, do so and that way it'll, it'll make the ride a little bit rougher. However, all of your components will stay a lot happier. Is there like a temperature kind of cutoff where we should consider that? Uh, I don't know exactly what it is. I feel like about minus 15 is kind of normally my, uh, the point at which I would do that. But I mean, personally, I would just, if once it starts getting colder and you and there's snow on the ground when you're riding, I would just lock it out. Okay, excellent. That would be my, uh, the rule of thumb I would give. Fantastic, all right. Uh, now, there was a couple other accessories that you can get that we were talking about when we were talking about clothing that we yes. mentioned here. Um, so I have mittens on, but there's yes, other do. options for your handlebars. There are. So there's something called uh, Pogies, uh, a brand that I personally use is called Bar Mitts. And what they do is they are giant neoprene sleeves that go over your handlebars, uh, like t uh, hugging all of your accessories and like enveloping it. And then that way you can reach in and put your and still have your hands on on your bars. You can wear mittens because you, there's going to be no wind on your hands, which nice. is where, as I said before, where most of the suckiness happens. And then you still have full dexterity without any of the issues. All right, so that's Perfect. what bar mitts or pogies look like, and they're excellent for winter they're riding. Phenomenal. I think they, in my mind, they kind of look like big um, oven mitts that yeah, are just affixed really to your bike. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. Yeah, so okay. they'll usually have a little bit of Velcro that comes here, and then they'll also uh, have a bar end plug inside them. At least a lot of them do. They keep it all in place, so you don't have to worry about them going floppy when you're uh, not riding. Sweet. All right. So take my batteries off, charge them when the room temperature, yes. lower PSI, maybe consider studded if you can find them for your bike, yes. uh, lube and dry and clean your chains, uh, maintain your drivetrain, wipe down your bike dress warm yep what else? um another one is because there's going to be a lot of grit especially if you're somewhere where they sand and and salt the roads 
Some of that might get onto your brake rotors, so making sure you clean those off on a regular basis as well. You can just use isopropyl alcohol and a clean rag. Uh, just wipe those down. If you find that you're getting really, really noisy uh, braking, even when in drier conditions, uh, that would be something that you might want to look into. And we did cover that in our brake maintenance video, Heck so you yes. can get some info Love on it. that there. Um, now, let's talk about ride specifics. So uh, I wouldn't recommend riding through slush, like riding through powder snow, fun, cool. Fun. Riding on you know a paved sidewalk with snow on the side, great, fun. Riding through slush, not a good plan actually, because it's like half snow, yeah, half water. I call it like the brown sugar, like yeah. consistency is, it, it sucks because you don't have enough, you have the contact, but there's not enough consistency there for it to give you traction. So it's very unpredictable. It's also a lot splashier yes. and full of literal crud that's gonna get up in your stuff. Yeah. And so, you know, avoid the slushy puddles as much as possible yes. just to keep everything happy and healthy. Exactly. Um, now, if you're riding, say, trails in the winter, yep. which actually I think I want to do this year. That sounds really Dude, it's fun. so much fun. I um, have done it before. It was great. Anything I want to consider on that front? On that front, um, I would say make sure you take a good light with you because it, it's always dimmer. Got my own and, again. Exactly. And... Um, just have fun, take it slow to begin with. Always, uh, like make sure you know the trail and how it's gonna react to your riding before you really send it. Um, is there any uh, different tools that you would recommend keeping with you? Or is my regular toolkit probably fine? I would, I would think that your regular toolkit is fine. If I think of anything, I will let you know before tomorrow. Cool beans. And uh, we will make sure to mention it in the, the live Q&A. Yeah, um, um, awesome. All right, so I think that pretty much covers the majority of our bases. Yeah. I was except for the most important thing. Safety. Safe. Okay, the second most important thing. <laughs> Have fun. Have Enjoy fun. Enjoy it. Get oh, out there. Yes, exactly. Uh, may I mention the lights, though? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about some more lights. All righty. So, uh, as we all know, winter comes with a lot of darkness. And especially here in Canada, I mean, I get to work in the dark and I leave in the dark, even if I only work eight hours. So... Uh, we need to have lights and I make sure that I have a headlight and a tail light on my bike when I'm riding in the winter. I either have reflectors or lights on my spokes to make sure that I have visibility side long. And then for me personally, I have found that because I'm riding in the winter and drivers aren't used to seeing cyclists in the winter, they're a lot less perceptive of us. So we need to be very proactive with how we act. The way I've done that is normally I have a light on my helmet as well that I use almost like a bell or like just a, a signal. So if I'm coming up and I don't know if a car has seen me, I, I have it dim, but I have it so that I can flash in the, the windshield or just make sure that, that I can get their attention a little bit and make sure that that way they know that I'm there and we can all stay safe. Throwing a high vis vest on. High vis vest is also very not a good. Bad idea yeah. Either. The, yes. the more visible you are, the better. Yeah. Uh, and so at lunch, we were talking about winter riding and use it to just be prepared to fall over sometimes. Oh, yes. Um, falling is going to happen. It's just um, a thing. It's just, it's, it's a thing when there is ice out, whether you be walking or riding, falling is going to happen. Um, just be prepared. Like, um, don't put in, one thing that brings it along is actually putting in too much of a, of a big steer or a big, a big input because the, the, that is what's going to set you off balance. Uh, I personally actually ride with very narrow handlebars in the winter so that it, it's more of just a lean. I'm just adjusting my body, which is gonna make that turn happen. Um, but yeah, just be prepared to fall, aim for the soft stuff. Um, obviously that isn't always possible, <laughs> but yeah, especially just, if you're just starting out with exactly it, again, just, take it as I said with the trails, take it slow, get to know how how you ride in the winter, how um, how it is to ride on different uh, surfaces, whether they be packed as packed snow, ice, powdered snow, um, everything in between. Maybe start out with some practice rides in your neighborhood, oh, yeah. some little cruises around the block on the street, yep. go through the park, pass in the park, work your way up. Yeah, exactly. Don't, don't start with like a 20 kilometer commute to work. Double black diamond. <laughs> Send it. Let's do it. 
Um, maybe 10 years ago, but <laughs> <laughs> not now. Not now. I'm oh. wiser and smarter and older. Um, yeah. Awesome. All right. So I think that. I think that covers it. Again, I think that covers it. We'll probably cover something else. And of course, if you have any questions about anything we've covered on this topic here, please go ahead and pop those in the chats or in the comments section, and we will be happy to answer those That'd in awesome. just a moment. I'm pretty stoked for winter riding, and I'm a big baby generally when it comes to <laughs> cold, even though I grew up here. But I'm really stoked to give it a go this year, and I hope you will yeah. give it a try. Honestly, like our, us getting ready for this and talking about it so much over the past couple of days. I'm really excited to actually get my bike out of storage and start riding it in the winter again. I do really miss it, and this has kind of like rekindled that love and that passion for it. All right, take it. me on some trail rides this Let's winter. Do Let's it do it. On my All right. Speed. Thanks again so much for joining <laughs> us. Catch you in a few seconds here for the live Q and A. All right. Thanks, yesterday, us. Welcome to the actual <laughs> live portion of today's live. Um, super active chat today so stoked thank you all so much for joining us so happy to have you here i'm just gonna scroll back through and answer some of the questions and things that had come up uh, while we were playing that first bit um alex my cameraman producer sidekick in this whole thing uh did answer a couple uh during the chat but i can go over them uh kevin in southern california it's only 27 i'm just a lot jealous. I could go for some. 27. I could go for some twenty-seven degrees Celsius <laughs> right as now. As well, heck yeah. I woke up to frost on my car again for the second day in a row, and I feel like it's not going to change anytime no, soon. It's not. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Eric, suggestions for pants? Uh, not getting your pants caught up in the chain ring. I saw a bunch of people gave you some great uh, suggestions there. Socks over pants. Wrap some Velcro, like a Velcro strip around there, um, yep. just to keep it out of there all excellent um somebody had mentioned wearing uh, more form-fitting pants uh in the winter this is also a good idea however i would also suggest that those pants are not jeans because just canada denim. winter one-on-one -on -one, denim does not hold heat it holds moisture and you'll actually be more cold in jeans than you are in just about anything yep. else so jeans do not make a pretty great layer also i don't find them super comfy to ride in personally, they're not the greatest to ride in unless they are made for it but again for winter jeans are just not a good not, plan. not the greatest plan but you do you um all right we did have a few questions about batteries and like minus 30 fahrenheit which is minus 34 celsius yeah. and how that's going to check out uh so when you're getting down into those minus temperatures when you're getting cold below freezing you're going to start seeing a reduction in range and performance out of your battery just because batteries yeah. don't particularly enjoy being cold uh so will they survive a ride at that temperature yeah yeah they should yeah and we have people here that commute with their batteries like into yep. the minus 30s and 40s um so yes they should just like i mentioned earlier in the video let them come to room temperature before Freak. plugging them in to charge they yeah they won't enjoy yeah. being charged from cold and if it dies like it, the battery life will not be as long so if it does die on your ride just make sure as she just said make sure to let it come up to room temperature before you charge every single time whether it be half charged or saying that it's dead yeah uh chris asked about if anybody sells a heated battery wrap i've not seen one i That'd don't think i've neat. seen one it would be possible um i've also seen people that just wrap their uh batteries with something like um whether it be like a heat like a space blanket or some foam or just something to keep uh just the cold the cold wind and insulate the battery to keep it itself warmer yeah but if anybody finds like a made product definitely yeah, share that with awesome. us that would be cool that'd be to cool know. that um, would be a very cool product just nothing we have seen in our travels and as canadians who travel through a lot of winter if those were common i think we'd have come across them yeah but uh, but doesn't I mean, mean they don't exist we're also in a very growing industry where this isn't something that's been exactly. been an issue for a very, up until recently so 100 percent. um chris you also asked is it good to wax the bike that was such a cool question we had a bit of a discussion yeah. about that um, so we meet, assume you mean kind of similar to like how one would wax like a surfboard or snowboard to protect against um, like water and salt. And like I can see where you're coming from with that, but 
it's probably not the best idea. It's not something I've heard of anybody doing. Uh, it might be a little... Tough to get off the bike. Yeah, it might be a little rough on your finish and paint job. So I don't think there's a product that's quite, quite like Yeah, I mean, that. looking at it, actually thinking about it now, even if you're looking at it from like a car perspective where people will wax their car and buff it and all that kind of stuff, yeah. that might do some, but you're also looking at a lot more sharp angles and like cre crevices, crevices and, and stuff where wax can get stuck when you are doing this. So I don't think it would help to the extent you're yeah. thinking it would help, but that's a cool idea. Um, I asked David actually, hey, could R&D invent that? And he's like, I don't, uh, chemical engineering. Yeah, that's not, that's not chemical engineer things. That's, that's a tough one. That sounds like beakers and test tubes. I volunteered, but I'm not a chemical engineer. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, so you guys found the different gloves. Thanks again to Alex for uh, looking those up. Uh, Lee, you asked about, is there anything you should be doing to store the battery during winter to extend, like keep the life healthy? Uh, we are gonna do a video next month about prepping your bike uh, for like winter storage. So we'll cover that there. I've yep. also covered it in a previous video with Eddie, just about like battery care. care is actually what that one is called. But in general, if you aren't gonna be riding for the winter, and a lot of people don't, um, keep your batteries out of the cold. You kinda gotta top them off, like don't yeah. let them sit for yeah, longer I think, than I think the, three like, months. Yeah, I think that the like rule of thumb is you can normally want them sitting around like 80%. Yeah. It's kind of the happy zone to make sure that there's no long lasting uh, issues or to yeah. get to extend the life of the battery as much as you can exactly and we do have some articles on the support desk too that dig in a lot more to um how to store your batteries for best longevity yeah so you can check that out on the support desk and in our previous videos thank you so much for that question of course if anybody has any other questions they want to pop in the chat go right ahead again thank you all so much for joining it love it um lisa same thing long-term winter storage of your battery that's kind of like what we just covered just there uh buffalo mine thank you so much for joining us um we started... Ooh, good question chris uh about the brake fluid um yes uh coming from a bike mechanic background mineral oil once you get below about 20 cell uh, minus 20 celsius it can get a little bit spongy uh, it shouldn't uh, stop you from being able to use them. Um, what, for people like in the acoustic bike world, a lot of people will stick with your, either mechanical brakes or go all the way up to like a dot fluid brake if they are building like a winter specific bike. Um, but I mean, it, it's a, so, it's something that you can get used to and account for in your day-to-day -day riding if you're not ha if you're not going to have a separate bike. And minus twenty Celsius is about minus four, minus five Fahrenheit. Just yes. Oh yeah, I did that conversion. Um, all right. Yeah, Chris, lots of salt in Michigan. A lot of salt here in Saskatchewan too. Oh, there's too. too much salt. Why here? plow the roads when we could just throw more salt on it? Yeah. Um, Even though salt only works below or above a certain point. Yeah. But that's fine. Salt and sand. Not that we're not that I'm bitter or anything. <laughs> How do you know the battery is it? Good question. Uh, mo voltmeter. Yeah. Like voltmeter. If, if you have a, a voltmeter to, so that you can check what it's sitting at, and the eighty percent would be eighty percent of the maximum charge, which is what eighty fifty eight point four for a or fi fifty six point four fifty four point four for a uh, fifty. I can't even remember any for a 48 volt, There's, 58 something for 52 We do volt. have a link also in our support desk about how to check your battery voltage with a voltage meter and voltage meters you can get for like 10, 15 bucks on Amazon or at like a local hardware store. They're yeah. pretty easy to find. Um, so there is an article there on how to test for that. Uh, any links to the battery talk? I think Alex is going to pull you a link up and drop that in the chat here just a second, Lee. Um, to help you out <laughs> so you get that link right there um, yeah so a lot of the gear we were talking about for winter riding that's all stuff you can find at like local bike shops local outdoor shops yeah um, 
If you have any of your own favorite products that you would like to share with us that you use for your winter riding, send it on over. This is going to yeah. be my first winter riding my bike, so I'm always looking for cool recommendations. Uh, share them with me. Yeah. Love it. All right. Um, okay, I'm just making sure I didn't miss anybody. Okay. That is the Alex update on the battery talk. I think we've covered everybody's current questions. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So if there's, I'll give it a second. If there's any last minute questions you want to pop in the chat, I'll answer those. Otherwise we will start wrapping up. It's much nicer out here today oh, and it's, it's supposed beautiful. to be beautiful this weekend. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to getting out there for a ride and not freezing my fingers off. <laughs> It's supposed to hit, I think, 20 Celsius on Sunday. So, Ooh, I know. I'm Thanks, expecting Chris. a call from the nation. You too. Um, <laughs> all right. So, we will wrap it up here for today. Once again, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be back again next week with a live. I'm super stoked about uh, I get to travel for this uh -huh. one. Um, so, we're going to do another dealer tour. Well, another uh, our first dealer tour uh, next week. So, do turn in for that one, and I'll catch you all there. That's awesome. Have a great day. Have a great day.